morning. Welcome to St. Paul AME Church at 13108 Brown Bridge Road in Covington, Georgia. My name is Roger Baker, and I would like to thank you for joining us via YouTube, Facebook, Zoom, and St. Paul AME COV.org. Now for a few announcements. Our Friday night prayer service will be held February 19th at 7 p.m. via telephone conference. Noonday Bible study is every Wednesday at noon via telephone conference, and Wednesday night Bible study is at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Women's Bible study is held on the second Saturday of the month, which is February 13th this month, and that will be at 9 a.m. Last but not least, Sunday school is every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. via Zoom. Please join us. Our order service is as follows. First, we will have an opening prayer by Brother Ishmael Buford. Next, we will have the scripture reading by Sister Shaquilla Henderson Baker. And then we will have the sermon brought to us by Reverend Jessica Buford. Once again, thank you for joining us. Enjoy and have a blessed week. Hello, everyone. This is Ishmael, um, Reverend Buford's husband. I want to give um, a huge thank you to everyone that uh, sent us prayers and Layla's, Layla uh, prayers this week. Um, as she had a procedure in New York. We're extremely thankful. It was a rough week, but we definitely got through it. Um, I would like to take this time to say a brief prayer with you all. If you could, please bow your heads, um, open your hearts, and clear your minds. Lord, we come to you humbly, asking that you place a hedge of protection over us as we go through these trying times of COVID-19. Lord, I ask that you bless those that are sick and shut in, those that are in hospitals, um, hospital staff, doctors, nurses, ambulance. Lord, we ask that you just touch everyone. Lord, we ask for your guidance for those that may have uh, some type of mental illness um, due to the strains of the pandemic. Um, Lord, we just ask that you continue to be our lighthouse um, during our rough seas that we face in this year and past year. Lord, I ask that you just continue to empower us and, and, and gift us um, this open season to give our love um, to one another, especially in these trying times in our country where we're divided. I ask that you heal us, bring us whole. In Jesus' name we do pray, amen. Good morning. The Old Testament will be coming from the book of Psalm 100 the 100th song. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endure to all generations.
Good morning, good morning, good morning. <sighs> it has been a week. It has been a week. Okay, so I'm going to jump right into the text. The 46th division of Psalm. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumults. Selah. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease, the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. I thought about a lot this week. <laughs> I thought about a lot. But for this, I haven't thought of a title. If I maybe had to put something on it, it would be my emotions almost had me. And please bear with me because this is coming from a very very vulnerable place and you know sometimes being vulnerable can can go against you but I'm I don't know what else to do or how else to be specifically in this moment so many may not know or be aware that Layla had another procedure this past week it's very routine and <clears throat> it should be something that we, my husband and I, are absolutely used to, prepared for, ready, well versed in the operation and before the before product and the after product. But when we, my husband and I, sat down and we actually talked and had a conversation, we found that it never, ever gets easier. And we've done this now seven times <laughs> we are a part of this group on Facebook and they too find it routine expected predictable even but just because we know doesn't mean that it makes it any easier as I was sitting on the bed in the Airbnb awaiting the call just before Layla was to head into the procedure I found myself telling Ishmael babe I need to get ready for Sunday he asked me well are you in the right headspace <laughs> I started thinking well well am I I 
found myself searching my brain as if I were, if it were Google, <laughs> looking for a verse that would provide some sense of peace and calm to my mind for the time being, and I came up with, be still. <laughs> That's it. Just be still. I started thinking. I know there's more to that division, and I pulled out my computer and searched the 46th division of Psalm. While my hubby knows me well, God also knows me, and he knew that in the midst of this unsettledness, I was experiencing something could and would emerge. I sat at the table reading and trying to figure out the relevance of this particular division to my situation, and as I read, it became plain and it became simple. The God of Joshua. <laughs> Why? Why did my mind stop right there? Why was there such a strong feeling of conviction taking over my mind, my body, and my spirit? The scripture says that God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. And oh, by golly gee, I felt like I was in trouble and I needed saving. So if we look at, at a flashlight, they are there to shine light in the direction that we want to go or need to look in order to be safe. When in the presence of trouble to watch our step, to simply see where we ought to step or go next. God is our light. God is my light. That never goes away, flickers or turns off. We just need to call out his name and there he is in the midst of trouble. In the midst of turmoil, we just need to call out his name. What we can sometimes fail to understand is that God is always there waiting for us at the doors of our heart, just waiting for us to let him in. During those times when your flesh or our flesh gets the best of us, we ought to know and remember that God is the flame. He will keep our lamps burning, turning the darkness into light. He will always and continuously be the lamp unto our feet, a light unto the pathway, continually leading. Not only has this past week been a lot, but this past month has been a lot. And I believe that these next verses describe what we've experienced it says that therefore we will not fear though the earth should change though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea though its waters roar and foam though the mountains tremble it within tumult verse 4 there is a river whose stream makes glad the city of God the holy habitation of the most high God will help it when the morning dawns those early morning prayers and those early morning crying out dear God dear God Jesus do you know what a stream is it's a it's a steady session a continual a, content, a constant, renewed, or steady supply of something. Water. God is our stream. Our endless supply of love. Our endless supply of support. Our endless supply of power. Never, ever leaving us. Verse 6. The nations are in an uproar. The kingdoms Potter, he utters his voice and the earth melts, meaning that at the sound of his voice, things change. Those things people said in 2020, thinking it would keep you down in 2021, are mistaken because God melted those things. Change. Those people who thought they had you bound and thought that you'd stay bound for whatever the reason may be were mistaken because God changed the situation. Meaning that those people who made false accusations and false reports of voter fraud, they may have had a following of over 700,000 plus supporters, but the Lord said your 15 minutes of fame are over, sir. 
there's a new season and a new way change people who spoke hate will be faced with the consequences of their actions change because in verse 7 it says that the Lord of hosts is with us the God of Jacob is our refuge do you know Jacob do you know what he did <laughs> do you know did you know that he came out of his mother's womb with his brother holding on to his foot considered less than even at birth did you know that he lied and stole his brother's inheritance did you know that he ran away to Mesopotamia and hid in the shadows for so very long did you know where God was during this entire time did you know that God was right there and when Jacob cried out father God God <laughs> hear my cry God did not hesitate to open his ear and listen God knows that, that we are human and <laughs> he knows this because he made us he knows that mistakes are made and will continuously be made and in 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 the book of Psalm I know it's in the Old Testament and I know some of my constituents may say that God of the God of the Old Testament was mean and yeah I can I can kind of see where that 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 that, that that's a, that's real it's legit I mean, he, he destroyed cities and and people for disobeying him. But God had a soft side, even in the Old Testament. Because when Jacob cried out, God listened. And that is a forgiving God. In verse 8, it says, Come and behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth he breaks the bow and shatters the spear he burns the shields of with fire verse 10 be still and know that I am God let's stop right there at that statement it's such a powerful one and, and in the midst of me trying to search for, for a passage or for a verse or a few words when I was sitting there with my husband trying to find trying to trying to be calm why did why did that verse come up be still because I don't necessarily believe that it was be still to relax to to take a seat and sit back because I know that's not what I did but but many in many instances people tend to think that this verse does mean to rest or to relax in who God is and that's perfectly fine but we also need to understand that this verse does encourage us to reflect on who God is but it's also a wake-up call because the verse continues on to say that I am exalted among the nations I am exalted in the earth I am <laughs> after that statement saying look at my track record okay go go back and ask some people because I am God then finally in verse 11 the Lord of hosts is with us the God of Jacob our is our refuge the God of Jacob is our refuge my refuge this chapter can be overwhelming and I'm sure Bible study can definitely happen out of out of this division of Psalm but it is necessary to read and slightly break it down in order to understand the overwhelm the overall purpose of what I'm trying to say the psalmist is telling us that we need to recognize the light at the end of the tunnel has always been there the flashlight has always been standing with us from the very beginning allowing us to yes choose but all the while showing us the path he knows 
needs we need to go down our emotions as as humans they get in the way and at times they can stifle us God knows this but we need to understand that our very present help our refuge our safety our shelter never leaves when we re- when we received the call that Layla was out of surgery and she was in her room making noise and being the diva princess spectacular <laughs> that she is, I realized <laughs> that God was ever so present. Not that I hadn't realized it before, but it was just, why were you worrying in the first place? <laughs> My human feelings and emotions and temptations and uncertainties and the possibility of the unknowns got the best of me and I paced back and forth, back and forth as I continued to look at my phone for another call as I worried my poor husband about making sure that the lines were available as if it, as if we had dial up and landline. <laughs> All the while God was in control God had Layla in that operating room on that operating table and said that yeah there is a 5 to 10% uh, chance of trouble but, but God was there and he said trouble you have no place here he said this one is fine she has all she needs in me God said I see her mother, Jessica, over there being Jessica, and I see her daddy seemingly being calm, chill, and collective on the outside, Ishmael. But before they arrived to this day, just as Jacob did, they cried out to me and asked for my presence and asked for my power, and I am here working through the doctors, working through the technicians, working through the anesthesiologists, working through the nurses, the assistants, I am making sure that they are taking care of my baby's baby. Because I am that I am. I am El Shaddai. I am El Elyon. I am Jehovah Rapha. I am Jehovah Shalom. I am Jehovah Jireh. I am Elohim. So no matter the situation, no matter the circumstance, no matter the past, call my name. And just like that old Jackson 5 song, I'll be there. Literally. The world we live in is a crazy place. Amid the pandemic, numerous deaths each day, a president that was more focused on division and falsehoods than the well-being of the citizens of the United States. States, God showed us that I don't need threats. I just need the prayers of a few righteous souls to call on the name of Jesus and decree and declare that a change is going to happen. Which is why we have seen for the first time in history in the state of Georgia, it turned blue. It wasn't red, it wasn't red. It was blue. Two senators filled two open Georgia seats. And they were a part of the Democratic Party. The first African American woman is now holding the second highest office in the land. And an invitation was extended to a speech impaired poet who told the world that I am proud to be a black girl. There was so much black girl magic in that box I was screaming in my cubicle quite literally. (laughs) Overall. As humans, our emotions can sometimes overtake the fact that we know all we need is a mustard seed of faith. Overall, my emotions almost had me. But my point, the entire point of this right here today is the fact that prayer, 
really does change things. It makes a difference. Because even though we know something and we know the outcome of something, we know the routine, we know the procedure inside and outside, God makes sure that us knowing and the study and the understanding is blanketed with the blood of Jesus Christ. We no longer live in the Old Testament, but this is so very relevant. And if we bring it to, to, to now, which is, which, which is past the, the New Testament, we understand the purpose of Jesus Christ. Paying for our sins so we don't have to always this is this is human this is a human being portion. We don't always remember in the midst of troubles that all we need is the faith the side of a, the size of a mustard seed because we are so entrenched, entrenched in our emotional state. It can be debilitating. But God said, You know what? I have a solution. I'm gonna send my son down. I'm going to send him to pay the price. So if my child forgets, if Jessica in the moment of unsettledness and chaos just forgets for a moment that I've got her and I've got her baby, I've got her husband, she will still be covered. Prayer changes things. But my emotions, they almost had me. I have three invitations for you. The first is to join the body of Christ. If you don't know him in the pardon of your sins, just give us a call, send us an email, find us on Facebook, Instagram, anywhere, and we will be happy to pray the sinner's prayer with you and invite you into the body of Christ. If you know Christ for yourself, but you just don't have a place to worship, you don't have a place to call home, we here at St. Paul AME Covington Church would love to have you. If you are a part of the body of Christ and if you have a church home, but just need a word of prayer, we are here for you also. We don't mind praying with you, praying for you, keeping you in our prayers. Just let us know. Let us know. Reach out to us and let us know. We thank you for just simply listening and for simply hearing what had to be said on today. Blessings. Blessings.